So as the Soviet Union in 1936, we really have to prepare because we're kind of a broken empire and we have to rebuild or else we will not be ready for the Great War. However, I don't want that to stop my ambitions to spread communism throughout the world. And there's two specific countries that I have in mind that already have a basis for kind of a communist revolution. One being France, and I already sent over a, uh, I, I'm beginning to uh, boost popularity of communism because they already have a 30% uh, party popularity so far in the country of France. And then the other one is a little bit more crazy, but the other one is Germany. Now, they already start off as a, a different faction. They already start off in the Axis faction. However, why not just try to see? Try to what? Why not? Why not try to see if we can maybe ch get, get them to, to switch to communism? W I, I, we'll see. We'll see. I, I I mean, we're really not having to pay too much political power at all. Um, you're talking about 0.25 per day. I'm making points. I'm making 2.5. Well, in the start of the campaign, because I'm already I'm already boosting it in France. It's point. Uh, it's 2.25 right now, so it'll go down to two. We'll make two political power per day. I'm fine with that because this could be huge. This could be super beneficial, and I kind of just want to see what would happen. Why not try to see what would happen if the Germans at the last second uh, had a communist revolution? So we're going to try that and see what happens. So as I said in the intro, uh, we are, yeah, we are a huge empire. We're, we're starting off as a huge nation. But we are not at all ready for the war, for the Great War. Uh, if we look at my uh, national focus, we've got a lot of different decisions that we can take. Uh, now, the national focus trees are going to, and I'm, yeah, I'm guess I'll, I'll say plural because they're different trees; they're not all connected. Uh, is going to help us make decisions that are probably going to differ from the real world and what actually played out um, in World War II. So, there's a few starting policies that we can go after. Um, we can actually go after anyone that we want. Uh, the Great Purge, I think, no matter what we no matter what we want to do, I think it's essential that we eventually go down to the Great Purge. As well as this is going to give us um, research, research city experiment. Yeah, n a nuclear technology uh, at a at a boosted rate, fifty percent research bonus. Uh, obviously, so the Great Purge is going to be a tree that we have to go down eventually. As well as it's going to kind of stable my empire. Right now, people are not people don't think that you know I should be the leader. I guess I'm referring to myself as Stalin here. Uh, I, I should be the leader of the Soviet Union. So we need to purge those people. We need to cleanse them. <laughs> I feel so evil for saying that. And uh, and get them out of the empire. That way we can unify ourselves and prepare uh, for whatever we choose to do. Uh, then the, this is going to be the interesting part. The middle part of our political national focus tree, I guess, is, is where things are going to get interesting. Now, I can definitely go down both these paths. Uh, I, I'm not, they're not mutually exclusive, like, uh, th this, these two policies are mutually exclusive, and I know that, yeah, these two are as well, uh, but I can, however, choose to go down one first and kind of stay away from the other. I'm actually thinking of staying away from the anti-fascist, uh, diplomacy. I kind of want to break the allies first. I kind of want to break the allies first. Now, I mean, obviously, the, the fear in that is letting Germany grow too big. Um, and I have no idea if I'm going to even have a chance of converting them over to um, communism. But I'm going to try. But I want to stay away from upsetting the fascist regimes. I want to leave them alone. I want to go for an anti-capitalist diplomacy. Um, I want to go and recounsel with Japan. If I can be cool to Japan, that would be great. Because I, I, I wouldn't have to fight a two-front war super early. Eventually I probably would, but not super early. Uh, and then I'd get claims with, uh, over China, I believe. I think this is, yeah. So I'd be able to, uh, recounsel Japan, the focus, uh, I believe this is, this would give me war with China or, yeah, Yarkand, uh, provinces out there in the Eastern Asian region. Uh, or I can, I can then to decide to expand my fleet, which right now we're really in no place to do so. I'm going to kind of leave my ships alone because I need to rebuild my military. You have no idea. I totally need to rebuild this military. Claims on the strait so we can go after Turkey, uh, maybe give Greece an ultimatum, and then eventually we can go to war with the UK. Uh, this, it's not like, you know, other Paradox games where you need to cast a spell eye. You research this national focus tree and these are going to give you Cassus Belli's. You have to have a reason to go to war and this is how you get those claims or those reasons. Uh, Southern Thrust. Oh, that's that's going to be pretty fun. UK gains Middle Eastern expansion. Okay, I, I, I get you. So that would be awesome. War goal would be to go after Iran and Iraq. Uh, that would be really fun. So yeah, let's just focus on, on converting over possibly France 
and trying to convert over the Nazis. I don't know if that's gonna ha I don't know if that's gonna work, but definitely try to convert over France to our faction because France doesn't start off in any faction. Technically, they're not a part of the Allies, uh, but that's gonna be difficult, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. But I will try. Uh, okay, so let's start off with our first focus. Um, we probably do need the five-year plan initially going going out. Uh, although the Great Purge is also pretty important too. Uh, but this is really going to help us rebuild. Defense of Moscow uh, would be good. The Great Purge is pretty okay. However, it's going to hurt us uh, in in the in the short term, not the long term. It's a, it's a long term policy to definitely want to go after. Uh, but let's just focus. Yeah, because eventually it will remove. Because right now our national unity is so low, twenty percent, and that means that if anyone gets like thirty five war score over us, uh, they'll be able to break our entire empire. We've got to get that a little bit higher. Even 55% isn't that higher. Uh, compared to Germany, Germany starts off the game, I think, with 90 national unity. So you have to, like, destroy all of Germany before they really get hurt. Uh, before you even win the the war. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's let's just go... Let's go to finish the five-year plan. Let's start off Let's start off with that. Okay, boom, let's do that. And then let's choose our... Uh, and the one reason why I'm doing that first, actually, the big reason is because uh, extra research slot. Because we don't, as some of the other great powers in the uh, in the starting 1936 um, date, they start off with four research slots. We're starting off with three, so getting that fourth one is going to be crucial. So I'm going to want to rush uh, that policy in the focus tree as quickly as possible. Okay, so let's go with land doctrine because, as I said, as the Soviet Union, we're probably going to stay away from kind of naval combat. Uh, so these tech trees will probably be kind of abandoned for a little bit from us. Not, not entirely, but for just a little bit. Uh, here's our land doctrine. As the Soviet Union, we start off with mass assaults, with the mass assault doctrine. And uh, this is pretty much the Soviet Union policy for war. Perfect weapons are overrated. A large number of good enough we a large number of good enough weapons is the path to victory. So pretty much we're just going to throw a bunch of bodies at you and hope it goes well. Uh, yeah, sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, I, I think I believe I can switch this over. However, you know, it's going to remove it, it's going to hurt. You can decide to take your country in a complete different direction if you want to, but uh, we are not I am not adv advanced enough for that. I do not think so. So yeah, let's go with the uh, supply grace. Plus 48 hours, very nice, and then uh, out of supply, negative 10%. Uh, 10%. This is going to take 210, this 270 days to research, so quite a long time. Uh, engineering and industry is also something very important. We probably won't be going to war anytime soon uh, because we have to just rebuild. Well, we don't even have the possibility of going to war anytime soon. I can probably skip over support weapons for now. This gives us pretty much bonuses in every single uh, land category that you can think of but like i said we we don't have the we're not going to be going to war anytime soon so i'd rather focus on engin engineering and industry these research trees instead uh and then here's our pathway to nuclear weapons which will be obviously something that if i can survive for long enough i'm gonna want to rush because that will be very fun yes decrease research time that would be amazing only 90 days and uh in terms of industry Production efficiency cap plus five percent. I like that. I like to be able to produce things faster. Um, we can also maybe go after synthetic refinery. Two hundred seventy days. That is uh, that is a long time. Yeah, let's go ahead and try to produce things a little bit faster. This is only going to take one hundred thirty-five days. I like it. Now, as the Soviet Union, obviously we're massive, which means that we have tons of resources. Yay, resources! I love it. Um, so we don't really have to worry about trade as much um we, the only thing we really need right now well actually we have surpluses but once we start to work these resources we're not gonna have surpluses anymore it looks like right now we just need rubber so thinking about invading a country with extra rubber uh is obviously on my priority list maybe the middle east middle east has a lot of oil but not as much rubber interesting i mean we could always trade uh trade with somebody for rubber uh, rubber we could try something like that, but uh, but we'll see. Anyways, let me do everything else first before I, I focus too much on uh, my resources. But yeah, just just so you guys know, I don't really need to worry about... So uh, I'm sorry, the Soviets don't really need to worry about the uh, resources as much. Okay, so let's focus on what we're going to build first. We've got quite a bit of uh, military factories starting off the campaign. So let's make sure that we go infantry equipment. Obviously, our infantry units are going to need equipment, and uh, we want to make sure that they have tons of it. I don't want to be in a deficit. I'm sure I start off in, the, in, in a deficit. Logistics is going to be like, I, I need all this equipment here. So with my military factories, I can build this stuff. Um, 
but you want to make sure that you set a good a good formula in the very beginning because if you don't if we if we decide to move this in the middle of the game and we're like you know what we only need three military factories pumping out infantry equipment uh that's gonna that's gonna hurt the longer you keep these military factories uh, something along those lines the longer you keep these uh these military factories working the same product so whether that be motorized or light tanks or you know what i mean uh support equipment they're going to get faster and faster at doing that so it becomes more efficient uh support equipment is going to be pretty important as well let me go seven here what does that leave us with ten more artillery is important and obviously tanks are pretty important uh we do have unique a unique tank tree as the soviets so that's pretty fun and that would be all of it and we wouldn't be going motorized as much i'm actually okay with that eventually i'll probably when i get more military factories uh, i'll probably increase this this rate oh yeah we're gonna have to skip out on on airplanes for now sorry sorry bombers and fighters yeah sorry about that um and we could switch this out at any point if we if we needed to, but I'm going to leave it like that. That's fine. Uh, like I said, for the naval, the whole naval part of the campaign, we are not going to be playing this game too much. We don't even have that many factories. We only have six naval dockyards. So, yeah, at this point, I mean, there's there's really not that much to do. We can always switch out these bombers if we wanted to. But, uh, that yeah, that's that's not that's not going to be good. Okay, uh, any more other things? I know that any more other things. Uh, is there anything that uh, we still need to... Free civilian factories. Oh, we need to construct some stuff. Okay. So we need to construct some stuff. Now we can build more military factories or civilian factories, which is kind of like a currency that we can use with trade. Uh, let's go ahead and... So we don't want to build this stuff on the border. We build this stuff on the border and the Nazis attack. Then once they get... Uh, once they... All they have to do is step into that province. They take it for themselves. And they are going to be getting the resources out of that province or state. They're actually states here. But uh, province... Yeah, technically they step into a province... But, yeah, they, they get everything in that province. I, I, I'm going to want to probably build this a little bit further away. However, I don't want to build it next to the Jap Japanese front either because that's a little bit scary. So building it next to, like, Moscow would be, I think, a good idea. Maybe just behind Moscow because if Moscow falls, then we're done. <laughs> There's just no chance. We haven't got no chance anyways. So let's build a – we're probably going to start want to start off with civilian factories at first. Yeah, so we'll start one there. And then maybe one here, I'm guessing. Yeah, so we'll just start on two for now. And uh, and then hopefully we'll begin work on military factories at some point. That way we can pump those those guys out a little bit faster. Um, and then let's go ahead and start training some divisions. We'll just start with some basic divisions. If we if we want to attack Iran, then having these kind of mountain, uh, these mountain divisions that, that specialize in kind of mountain combat, uh, that will be important, but I have no idea what we're going to go. I, I have no idea what path we're going to go. It really depends on what the AI pushes me as well. So, yeah, let's let's just start off with uh, a few of these units. Let's build, let's train three at a time. And um, I will have you spawn up on the border, on the German border, because, because why not? Wait, did I do that right? Or did that, yeah, I didn't do that right. I accidentally clicked, there you go. Okay. So we'll have three divisions training right now, and I think we are good to go. Uh, if I can trade for rubber, then I should. Here's rubber. The UK has rubber, which is unfortunate because... Ooh, France has rubber. Even better. Yeah, I think, I think we should probably trade with France. Because I, I have a feeling... Let's see, we only need six resources of rubber. I've got no extra civilian factories to give them, though. Okay, you know what? We're going to have to deal with this. Uh, we have to give, deal with this until we have extra civilian factories and then we'll trade for it. But uh, I think that is going to be it for now. I think we are all ready to go. Let's go ahead and increase the speed here because, uh, yeah, we, we, uh, now we, now we have to wait and try to figure out what the AI is going to do and how, how much luck maybe we can get. If we, like I said, if we can convert over France to communism, that would be great. That would be fantastic. Uh, so we need to keep an eye on this on this circle here. I guess this pie chart. I guess it's technically like a pie chart. Uh, now, France starts off the 1936 start with an estimate. Now, this is all estimates, but it's probably it's probably accurate. And somewhere in between, you know, 50 to 96 divisions. Um, they've got quite a, a large uh, navy at this point. They've got good military fact. Well, actually, they only have six military factories. That's nothing. That's that's not very good. They also don't have very many naval dockyards either. 
Uh, civilian factories, they've got almost as much as us. Close to. Probably, it's probably somewhere in the middle. You can probably estimate someplace in the middle. Uh, lots of planes, and we have, like, no planes, do we? Uh, we can actually check that if we check over our air. Yeah, we... Well, we've got some. It's not terrible, but... It's it's probably yeah it's we we we're gonna need a lot more, we're gonna need a lot more. Okay, so let's plan through our our pathway, uh, cause we're about to finish the five year plan, our pathway through the focus tree. Now, uh, I I believe that there might be I think there's a policy in here, where we could possibly attack Poland ourselves. Uh, taking Poland first would be amazing. I'm not entirely sure if that is accurate. Uh, I thought I saw it in here somewhere. It would probably be in the anti-capitalist um, regime somewhere. Common turn. This is our faction here. Gains. Oh, really? Uh, this is how... This is a very, very important daily support for a thousand days. We can try to get communism to spread to France and the UK uh, with this policy here. So, yeah, that is, uh, that's going to be pretty important that we maybe try to rush that. I need to keep an eye on my notifications because I'm having this the the, the game play on in the background. Uh, again, we do have to go for the Great Purge eventually because that's at, at we there's no other choice choice. We have to go Great Purge uh, Purge at, at some point. Uh, a, a Finland war also that Finnish war that of course we're gonna get ourselves into. We've got to win that. We got to win that the first time around. Win Finland, take all this land. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what kind of resources they have. Also, we need to look at our. Uh, we really need to look at our supply range. So far, I think we've got the infrastructure in place to really be able to, you know, send divisions anywhere we might need them to any front. So that's great. Uh, but we need to make sure as the Soviet Union, we have the best infrastructure, like, almost in the world. Because we need to get places fast. We need to get places extremely fast. So these numbers can kind of show us exactly how many regiments each state can hold. I'm sorry, regiments. I'm going to always say regiments. Divisions. Uh, so that is going to be kind of important that we keep that in mind but yeah no a war with finland a successful war with finland is going to be crucial i really really want this now what i was going to do is i wanted to just check on their resources really quick to see what they have over here uh they don't have rubber but you know that's that's fine that's okay. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop right there. If you guys like the series, if you guys like Hearts of Iron 4, or uh, I don't know, if you guys are, I don't know, just enjoying this and you have no idea what, what's going on, which is probably uh, a lot of you because I know that I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It take me. It did take me a long time to kind of figure out uh, how this game works. But uh, either way, if you guys like this series, please consider leaving a like. It helps out tremendously. I'll be back uh, for part two very soon. And uh, hopefully as the Soviet Union, we can take over the world and spread communism. But we'll see. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time.